So technology is a wonderful thing, right? Um, yeah, so this is basically um, attempt number two to show you a little, little a bit of a look into the project of um, In These Arms, which is uh, my Hydra remix. Um, so yeah, I basically, uh, the last attempt, my Wi-Fi cut out and uh, I was wondering why the hell everything stopped. So anyway, we'll start again. So um um, as I said before, um, if you've got any questions, um, any producers out there that want to know how I achieve a certain sound, um, you want to know the effects chains that I use on my mastering plugin kind of range, um, the sounds I use, how I achieve um, space in a mix, all this, um, then send me the questions. I can see them coming up. Um, it's a rather a crude way of doing this. I've literally just got my phone looking at the screen because I'm running in 4K. So um, yeah, it's the best I can do for now. So um, basically, um, I think I talked for about five minutes um, before my Wi-Fi cut out last time. Fingers crossed it won't happen again. So um, I'll just um, basically run over for those that never saw the first five minutes. So basically, um, my project um, is about 120 tracks on this particular track. This is fairly typical for one of my productions because I like to go into a lot of detail. Um, a lot of sounds you'll only hear once. Um, other sounds you might only hear once when you've heard the track 10 times because they're very subtle. Um, and that's just how I like to produce. Um, some people make a track with five or six tracks, 20 tracks. I, I, I tend to go into a lot of depth and detail, um, especially for um, where I'm heading with Hydra. Um, it's all about detail, emotion, and little things that make a track. Um, when you hear them for the first or second time or third time that you hear a track, it's all about the detail for me. So um, a little run through what's going on in the project. So. As I said earlier in the previous broadcast, which um, fell apart, <laughs> um, I basically group all my drums at the top of the arrange page. So you can see those grouped there um, in a folder. Beneath there, I have all my effects. Um, this, is, this is really just for me to organize things so I know where to find things in my project. Um, going down the arrangement, I've got all my pads. Um, on this particular track, um, there's something like 20 different pads which um, all combine and play at different times and you know for, for me pads in trans music uh, is what allows you to really create that kind of warm lovely emotional feel there's a lot of dynamics and a lot of production going on in those parts so we'll take a look into those in a short while um, further down the page I have um, some arpeggios which we'll look at individually and then all the the main synth parts and at the bottom of my screen um i have my bass um which kind of seems to make sense for me having the bass at the bottom there so um i'll literally just repeat what i said in the previous um broadcast so um starting with the bass it's um it comes from diva which is a very very simple sound it's just a it's like a Two saw waves, um, sounds like this. And for the producers among you that are keen to know how I um, kind of what insert effects I use, um, I've been using Oxide from UAD um, for about the past year or so. Um, I tend to put this on most tracks just because it gives a really warm, cohesive sound to pretty much anything I put through it. Um, and then from there, again, um, this is the EQ that I use, um, Fab Filters Pro Q2. This is my go-to EQ. I use this on all my tracks. Um, pretty simple. Um, a lot of people, when they're working on the bass sound, they think, oh, well, I need to add more bass. That's not often the case, actually. You need to cut a lot of the bass for it to actually be clear in the mix. Um, so you can see um, that I've cut a lot of the bass actually from this. And that just gives um, space for the kick drum to uh, do its thing. Um, after the EQ, I have the LA-2A. Again, it's a UAD2 plugin, um, which, uh, again, I tend to use on pretty much every track. Um, I've got eight UAD2 cores, which is never enough, so I'm often bouncing down to audio and the final thing I have on the bass is a uh, multi-band sidechain. What this allows me to do is to duck the lower frequencies and also the higher frequencies but separately so um, there's less ducking or less sidechaining on the high frequencies so you can still hear the notes but the lower notes don't clash so much with the kick. So um, the kick and the bass together sound like this 
Let me just go to here. And what I tend to do is send my kick and my bass to a group. Um, and what I do is um, I, I go through the API um, to 500. And it just gives a more punchy sound to the bass and kind of, I don't know, kind of glues the bottom end together for me. Um, so let's just move through. So if I look at the drums, I mean, uh, my kick drum, I tend to use battery. So I have a, there's not many sounds in here at all, actually. I'm only using like five sounds from battery on this particular track. Um, but as we come down, um, we have like my crash cymbal. Nothing interesting there. I've got a, um, this is um, one of Chicane's hi-hats, actually, that um, I got from uh, when I did one of his remixes. I stole one of his samples. Um, it's going through... It's been sent to my Lexicon PCM80 um, uh, reverb, which is um, a reverb that I've used for years. And then after this, we have just a hi hat, and then we have another hi hat. And what I'm going to do, I'm just going to bring in the different loops and hats that I'm using in this project, just so you can hear them in context. So not amazingly interesting, but in the mix, they kind of, um, they, they provide all the top end that I need. What I also do with all my hi-hats and, and tops, again, we go to um, uh, a group. So I'll have all my hi-hats going through a group and that allows me to basically, um, I can filter the hi-hats together and also EQ the hi-hats. Um, I use Tone Looks Tilt an awful lot on a lot of my tracks. It's a very, very simple EQ that allows me to either boost or cut um, the top or low end with just one simple knob. So um, again, one of my um, favorite plugins that I use a lot. Um, so as we're looking at the mixer at the moment, I basically have three mix views. My first one is for my audio channels. So these are all my audio channels, which we can scroll through. And on my second view, these are all my instruments, which I can see. Um, and then on my third group, I have um, all my effects and groups. Um, so that's basically what's inside my mixer. Um, so coming down the screen, um, effects and sweeps. These are pretty much um, all these sounds I kind of make myself. So um, like... So Lush 101 is a is a synth that I don't see many people using actually, but I use it all the time. It's like um, an SH101 clone. Um, so this is like a, a sweep that I made with this. Just turn it up so you can hear it. And what I tend to do, that's going through the Arts Acoustic Reverb and two delays. Um, for delays, I use Soundtoy's Echo Boy. And if we look in my mixer, we have um, one, two, three, four, five, six different delays on effect send. So I, I know if I want a, like a, a stereo ping pong on a quarter beat delay, I know where to go. If I want a dotted eighth, I know where to go. So everything's pretty much set up in my template so I can have all those delays ready to go. Um, again, um, another, I'll just play you another one of the sounds. Again, this is from um, Lush 101. So all these kind of effects I tend to make myself. Um, some of the other sounds I've got in here are... And... So um, this arcade prism, this was a sound that I made um, in the original version of In These Arms, which is the first track on my album Escape. And... Um, a plugin that I came across recently is Grain Space. Um, I'll just show you this. And this is like a granular um, reverb, and it just adds. If I'll, I'll play it without the Grain Space, and you can hear the difference. Just turn these effects off. 
So without grain space. Sorry, that's with it actually, hang on. So without it. Okay, quite a boring, bland sound, but with grain space. You get this beautiful kind of chorus, shimmery reverb. So, um, it's yeah, it's, it's become part of my sound now. So I'm using that all the time. Um, also in my kind of effects, again, this is, um, I make all these sounds myself. This is uh, just a sound which I put through like a, like a space echo. And you hear that maybe like five or six times throughout the track. Um, we have all these, um, <laughs> they're called Geiger. All these little, little sounds that you hear. Um, going further down into the track. This is like an ambient effect that kind of starts in the breakdown. So I'll just play you from the breakdown actually. So I get asked a lot about how I make my pluck sounds. So the the main pluck from here and also um, which I used on Amber, um, again, it's Diva. Um, I can make the sound on like the, the Nord um, League 2, um, but here I'm using Diva. I use Diva a lot. I mean, there's maybe like five cents in this entire project. So it's Diva, it's Omnisphere, it's June, um, Lush 101. Um, I think that's pretty much it actually. Oh, and Zebra. So this sound um, is called Everything Thirds, so it's, it's a sound. Um, let me just... so... so it's a very simple, um, it's like, a, it's, again, it's like the bass actually, it's two saw waves um, running through like a Moog filter. And if I show you what effects they're going through, again, very much like the bass, it's going through the UAD2 oxide. Um, and then I'm using the tilt EQ, which um, basically I just, it just adds more top and re reduces the bottom end. And from there, I'm going into Pro Q2, cutting out a lot of the bottom end, and then straight into um, my LA2A. And then there's a second um, Pro Q2, and this is one of the presets called Subtle Stereo Enhancer. And it just kind of widens the sound with a mid side EQ, um, and it ends up sounding like this. So that's uh, basically the lead. Um, a lot of the time, actually, layer two or three, but on this particular occasion, I didn't need to. Um, the other main sound I have kind of running throughout this track is um, this kind of guitar sound, which comes from June 2. Um, so I'll play this for you soloed so you can hear it. So um, again, looking at the, the plugins that I use to affect this, it, again, it's the UAD2 oxide going into Pro-Q2, into Tilt, into um, LA2A, um, 
And at the very end, I have on another screen, which I'll just drag over for you, is the UAD Pultec, um, which just allows me to have, add a lot of top end without it sounding too brittle. Um, and again, it's going through that grain space um, reverb, which just makes it sound really lush and spacious. Um, it's like granular reverb, really, really nice. Um, so uh, the music producers, if you haven't got grain space, highly suggest you check it out it's it's like 30 euros it's so cheap so um yeah just check it out very very cool indeed um other sins that we have let's have a look we have so in the start of the track we have this um i've called it sore thirds let's have a listen So this sound is basically doubling up what the guitar is doing. And another sound we have came from Strobe, but what I've done, I actually, this was running on a separate PC, um, running through Vienna Ensemble, um, and I've bounced this to audio, So, but this is another one of the key sounds. So that's running pretty much throughout the whole track, actually. Um, I think what really makes this track is is the pads. Um, once you get down to the breakdown, um, I mentioned earlier, there's like 20 different tracks of pads. And most of these are coming from um, either Spire or from... Um, let's have a look what we have. So here's um, so Serum I use a lot for my pads. Um, this is one of the patches which is in my Serum bank. So um, if you've got Serum and want to kind of make pads like this, let me just solo both of these. So very, very simple, um, like single note lines that run along the top. When we get to the breakdown, there were two playing, so I'll play both together. Okay, so that's that's basically two of the 20 pads. So I'm just going to just show you all the other pads, just to show you how I do it. I mean, there's obviously no right or wrong way to do pads. Um, the first one is coming from Spire, and it's basically a low note, which kind of adds a lot of bottom end and then a second spire which has um it's playing a it's playing a ninth chord so it's about to come in here So that's just two of the 20 pad tracks that I have in this particular arrangement. Um, so in the breakdown, there's a, a patch which is coming from Omnisphere. So um, I'll show you the sounds that I'm using. So this one is called Fat Air JD Pad. So this is actually one of the presets. So if you've got Omnisphere, you'll be able to find this. Okay, and below there we have um, another pad. Again, this is from Omnisphere. This is called PPG Glass. And then we have, um, in fact, I've updated to, this is gonna be a nightmare. Let me get rid of this. Um, I've just updated to Reactor 6, so I took away Reactor 5, so that's a bit of a nightmare that I can't actually play that sound. Um, Arctic Winds is another sound which came from Reactor. Again, it's just a single held note. And then another sound, very similar, Horizon. This came from Reactor as well. And 
I'm sure a lot of you will be finding these really boring, but the producers amongst you, um, it gives a little bit of insight to what I do. The next um, sound is, again, another patch from Omnisphere, which um, is called Archaic Chasm. It's one of my go-to sounds for that kind of really kind of chicane um, you know, really blissful kind of Ibiza vibe, which I kind of love. So it sounds like this. Um, going further down, we have another one which um, I've rendered this to audio, but it's called Fifth's Bliss, and this was a patch from Omnisphere again. And then this one's running live again from another Omnisphere. I think I've got like six Omnispheres running here. So this one is um, Heart of Darkness. Um, Again, it's another preset, but I tend to tweak them to to fit and automate a lot of the parameters. So this is, it's like the it's like a bass note in the breakdown. And doubling up that, we have another bass, which is also from another Omnisphere. Below this, we have another bass playing exactly the same thing, but from another sound. So what I find is layering up all these different types of pads, um, and a lot of um, a lot of these pads have automation on the filter and the volume and the panning, um, even on the effect sends. So I might automate how much reverb is on a particular sound at any time, um, and accent certain notes. Um, so what I'm going to do is just solo all the pads together. So we've got 20 tracks of pads, um, and obviously they're not all playing at the same time, but um, in the breakdown, pretty much all of them are making an appearance at some point. So this is just the pads in the breakdown. So obviously the producers amongst you all know you cannot you cannot get anything close to that with just one or two pads. You have to have layer upon layer, um, each with different attack times, um, each with different filter settings. Um, you, you pan them left and right, you have some center. You even automate the pan on some of these just so the space and some of these will be really dry and some of them will have lots of reverb, some will have lots of delay, some will have the granular reverb which I talked about earlier. Um, and that's how I get my pads to sound really warm and lush and wide. Um, coming down the project further still, we have, um, there's a couple of, of arpeggios that pretty much run throughout the track. So again, this is another Diva arpeggio which is, um, I rendered to audio, uh, which sounds like this. And you can hear that kind of filtering in and out. One of my favourite um, parts in this whole track actually is um, um, an arpeggio which came from the Nord lead. Um, I loved it so much I had to use it pretty much all the way through the track. Uh, I'll just play it to you now. So if you... Um, I don't know how well you know this this track, um, but you can obviously get it um, if you know if you appreciate all this. Just go get it on Beatport and listen to it, and you can hear in uh, in detail how all this works. But this this um, this part um, was from the Nord lead and comes in and out all the way through the track. Um, again, in my arpeggios thing, I have another thing. Um, again, it's been.
So that was another sound which came from my Nord lead. Um, and then we have one more arpeggio, which is in when it all kind of kicks off at the end, which sounds like this. Um, this is coming from Zebra. Uh, I use Zebra quite a lot. And this particular sound is called Pluck Solar Stone. So there you go, I'm using a Solar Stone ish sound. Um, right, so what, have we, what haven't we covered? Um, so coming down to the synths that I use, so we've already looked at the main lead. There's, um, what's really interesting in this track is when it comes to the breakdown, um, I felt like there needed to be a delay before the, the main melody hits. So nobody, unless they're DJing with this track, will realise that there's actually an extra bar um, thrown into this track. Um, it's, and it's got two beats rather than four. So I had to kind of insert two beats. Um, and you don't, you don't really feel or hear that when you're listening to the track. It just feels completely natural. But a lot of DJs, if they're uh, trying to sync this up on their CDJs, they'll be like, oh my God, where have these two beats gone? So, um, but this is just something that just happens completely naturally. Um, what am I trying to do here? So I have... Let me show... I've got so many tracks here that are hidden, so... Yeah, basically, I mean, most sequences will allow you to um, insert different bars and tempos and slow things down, but this is something that happens in this track where there's a bar of two beats rather than four. Um, the piano that I use is Keyscape, but again, it's something that I've rendered down. Um, so what do we have? Um, So that's a, a nice little piano run, um, which was kind of uh, inspired by BT's earlier stuff. Again, it's going through Arts Acoustic Reverb and the Grain Space. Play that again, it's such a nice little bit. And in context with the track. So if, you, if you've got any questions about how things are grouped or I've been asked about the master chain, what do I put on my master chain? Um, well, for, for this track, it's, I pretty much use a very similar setup, to be honest, for most tracks. Um, the, the final mix that you hear that was released is exactly what came out of Cubase. It hasn't been mastered anywhere. It's just what came, came out of here. Um, so on my master chain, we have um oxide which again um i use a lot there's two settings on oxide you, you can you can run this at um 15 inches per second or seven and a half inches per second but if you run it at 15 inches per second it kind of gives a real boost to the bottom end so you kind of get like a 60 hertz boost so the kit the base feels really fat and warm um you can find that that is often quite too much so straight after oxide I have this EQ um, where I've rolled off a little bit of that bass, so everything below 42 hertz is rolled off slightly. Um, and I've also got a dip here at it's about 200. Yeah, yeah. Well, yes, it's 197 hertz, but yeah, around about the 200 hertz. What what I tend to find when you're layering a lot of um, pads and you know bottom end stuff it gets a little bit muddy so it's it's all the mud always seems to be around 200 hertz so i've just taken out um almost 2 db around 200 hertz um which just cleans up the bottom end a little bit um straight after there we're going into um the ssl bus compressor um i'm using the uad2 version um i used to use the waves one but this sounds way better um so that's quite a recent purchase for me um, from there, I go into a vintage warmer. Um, it's just on a preset mix, first aid uh, number two. Um, it's, it's just got a little bit of a, a top end boost and um, slight compression. And then after there, we go into, this is quite a chain actually, we're going into the UAD2 precision bus compressor. So basically what this does, what this compressor does, it, um, like well, I can show you. Um, so, right from the very beginning of the track, we're getting four dB reduction. 
from the very, very beginning. But what happens when we get to the breakdown, um, it, there's basically, because the breakdown's fairly quiet, that there won't be any reduction. So we're getting somewhere between zero and two dB of compression in the breakdown. So the whole point of this compressor is um, to bring the breakdown up in volume. Um, and this particular plugin does this very transparently. You don't notice any change. Um, you don't really hear it working. Um, but what you do notice is that the breakdown comes up in volume, um, but very, very subtly, so maybe 2 or 3 dB. And when it kicks back off again, you'll probably see um, it's back to 6 dB of compression. <laughs> yeah, so we've got maybe 5, 5 dB of compression when the whole track's kicking off. But in the breakdown, almost hardly any compression at all. And then finally in my master chain um, is the ProL, again from FabFilter. So I use a lot of um, FabFilter plugins. Um, basically what I've got here, if I turn this off, then... Um, let me just pull it back in. So basically what I've got going, I've got 6 dB um, of limiting going on here. So it's basically um, doubling the volume of the track, if you like, it, um, which is what it basically means to the, <laughs> the, the end result. Um, but in such a way that um, it's very musical. I don't like to limit my tracks too much. Um, so... <laughs> So we've got about um, so about 6 dB of limiting when it's working at its hardest. Um, we've got oversampling set to two times and um, we're dithering to 16 bits because I was mastering this out to a 16 bit master. And then the final output I've got set at zip minus 0.02 just so we don't get any um, intersample clipping. So that will mean something to some of you and not to others. Um, so hit me up with any more questions that you might have um people asking me still what 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 door am i using it's cubase um been using this for 25 years um does everything i need it to do um so yeah let me just um, what i'm going to do is, is whiz through the questions and see if i can answer any more questions um let me know anything else you need to know um so i'm being asked what kind of rms um i'm hitting um well I, I aim to have between uh, minus eight to minus ten. I mean, any more than that, then it, it sounds starts to sound distorted to my ears. So I aim for minus eight at the most, at the absolute most. Um, you know, I like to keep the dynamics in my tracks. Um, there's like a there's like one particular time where after the second chorus, there's this like bottom piano bass stab, which I'll just play to you. So I'll play that in context, and the the point I'm what, the point I want to get across to you is that if I limit this track any more than I have, you will not get the dynamic of this bottom piano really hitting, and you do really feel it if you listen to the, you know, the the, the proper mixed version. Um, so grab a copy if you can. You'll you'll feel the dynamics, and for me this is a it, the dynamics in a lot of trance is missing these days. But when you listen back to, you know, the earlier stuff from Pollock and Paul and Chicane and BT, they're very obvious, and that's the biggest difference between the old trance and the new trance is that the dynamics are missing. So this is a particular moment in the track where you can hear the dynamics. So it's where this piano bass hits. Um, of course, I'm only recording this through an iPhone speaker, so you're not really going to get this. So um, yeah, check out check out the full track if you can. Um, what near field monitors am I using? I'm using Dyn Audio um, BM6 A's. Um, I've had these for about 20 years, I think. Um, they've been running pretty much 24/7 ever since. I love them. Do I use Silent? I do, but it's I'm not using it in this track. It's not it's not a synth that I like that much, to be honest. I know everyone goes crazy about it, but um, I'm pretty much all about Diva and Omnisphere and Dune and Zebra. And for me, they have a much warmer, natural, 
more kind of I don't know they, they just sound more uh, luxurious um do I use headphones I don't I never ever use headphones in the studio I don't I never I never take my tracks to the car to to um AB them I never check in the headphones I just totally and utterly trust these Dan Audio monitors because I've used them for 20 years so um I literally what I hear and what I go over that's it I never I never go back and tweak unless I've played it in a club and I felt like there was something missing um, then I might come back and change something. Maybe a hi hat wasn't loud enough, or um, it was too bass heavy. Then I might come back and just have a look at that. But um, personally, I don't AB with other speaker systems. When am I going to be master synesthesia? I'm not. That room is totally done and nailed. I never want to touch that track again. Is my room treated? Yes, it is. Um, I can show you where my room. Hang on. So basically, um, I have all these panels. So up in the ceiling, I have these diffusers which kind of um, break up the reflections in the ceiling um, over here. Um, behind these red panels, I have bass traps in the walls. Um, and again, it's kind of similar at the back of the room. To my left, I have another acoustic panel. And over to my right, I have acoustic panels on my windowsill, along with some other little gadgets. Um, so there we go. The, um, yeah. So hit me up with any more questions. No, I do have bass traps. Bass traps in all four corners of my room. Very, very important. Need to have those. I'm just going to go back to some of the questions. What is my tip for getting the kick sub to cut through the mix without destroying the clap? Um, I think I showed this earlier, actually. I have my kick um, and my bass, and they go to... This is a fairly kind of typical setup for me. Um, it's Diva on the bass and they both go to um, a group together and they both go through the API um, 2500. And actually there's barely anything going on with the compression here. It's just, um, just to slightly tighten up the kick. It gives it a slightly punchier edge. I can, I can accentuate this so you can hear what it's doing. Um, but I appreciate that you're listening through an iPhone uh, microphone, so it's actually probably not audible to you at all. Um, what is the iPad for? Well, I'll show you. This is my iPad. Um, it basically allows me to assign um, buttons that I use in Cubase um, to buttons on the iPad. So I can, a lot of the buttons on the iPad actually do five or six things all at the same time. So I have one button which um, quantizes, fixes the velocity, makes all the note lengths the same. So things like that, I can program any macro to any one key. And um, the software is called Metagrid and it works um, with every door. And it even works with other applications. So if you use Photoshop or um, Excel or whatever, you can program, program it to do anything basically. Um, what sound card am I using? I'm using a Focusrite um, Pro 24, which is down here. Um, this, um, I've had this for years. I don't actually think, so long as you've got a decent sound card, it doesn't really matter too much. Um, you can have the, the, the crappiest sound card or the best sound card in the world. The end result, if you're bouncing in the box digitally, it will sound the same regardless. So, as so long as you know, it's, you've got some, it's not a noisy sound card and you've got enough inputs for what you need, then um, you know, pretty much any sound card is good to go. Um, one of the main things to look out for with sound card is that you can get a good low latency and on this particular sound card I do. Um, what is my PC setup? It's um, it's a four, is it four seven sixty k? I've got it overclocked to four point six um, gigahertz with sixteen gigabytes of RAM, and I think that's about it really. Um, so it's it's a Hackintosh. So I'm running Mac OS on um, this particular. PC, very stable, very solid. Um, I was looking to buy the um, the Mac equivalent, and it was going to cost about six thousand pounds to do the same thing. And I built this for six hundred pounds. So um, this is how I uh, yeah came to build a Hackintosh. So uh, yeah, there you go. Um, I'm just going through questions again. So two questions: Do you use the sends to add reverbs? Um, yes, I do. I have. Um, if you missed this earlier, I have basically. Um, I've got two reverb set up. So on my my first um, send, I've got my Lexicon PCM80, um, which is followed by an EQ, um, followed by Atz Acoustic Reverb. And then I've got six or seven 
um, Echo Boy, Sound, um, Sound Toys, Echo Boys, Echoes. And then I've got a granular reverb and then I've got a couple of groups. Um, so it's quite, it's actually a very, very simple, straightforward project this, even though there are 120 tracks in total. How do I master my tracks? Well, I mentioned about, I talked about this earlier. Basically, um, I basically, I have my mastering chain. Um, if you missed it, then, then just um, go back and look at the video again. But um, um, I, I mastered straight out of the box. For my Escape album, then um, Yuri from Drift Moon mastered everything through tape. Um, just because I wanted to go somewhere extra special and give it a little bit of extra sheen and gloss. Um, and that works beautifully. Um, but for, you know, you know, general club tracks like this, then, um, you know, the sound I get is um, I'm, I'm quite happy with. So what you hear is straight out of Cubase. So what do I use for side chaining? I use um, a Vengeance. Um, it's called, I'll, sh I'll show you it. Um, so it's the multiband side chain. So I can basically sit this on, a, on any track and um, tweak the parameters to, to work with the track. What meters do I use? Well, basically Cubase has um, the has a control room. I'll bring it into the screen so you can see I've got two screens. So um, these are the meters that I use. Um, I always start with a kick. If, if I turn off, in fact, you'd be quite surprised actually, if I turn off all my inserts on my master chain and just play the kick, then we are running at, so my kick is actually peaking at minus 25 dB. So this is where I'm at before I start to add any um, anything else. I mean, as a general rule of thumb, I start um, with a kick at minus eight, but I think as I added more to this project and I started automating groups, everything came down. And it doesn't really matter so long as you can have enough headroom to um, play with your inserts on your master. So when I bring my master back in, my master chain back in, then the kick will be, let's have a look. So with my master chain, I'm hitting minus eight RMS. Let me just stop that because listening to a kick is just not fun at all. So any more questions? How many kicks do I use? Well, this was a kick that I made. Um, it's running in battery and it's called Steve Punch Kick for some reason. So I just made that by layering two or three kicks um, and EQing it and then bouncing it down. So what I actually have is just a, a straight sample playing from battery. Main plugin for Super Saws. Um, well, I don't really have a main one for Super Saws, although I do like um, I do like to have Zebra. So I, I'm using Zebra in here already for Super Saw. So I think. Um, let me see. Yeah, I've got a I've got a saw. Oh no! In fact, I was using um, June Two on here for. Yeah, but I do. I'll show you actually. I mean, the if I pull up Zebra. Um, then there are some amazing super saws in Zebra. So, um, like the Adam Zabo is a is a good go to bank. Um, so let's have a look. So JP Performance is a great one. <laughs> So that's just without any effects, it's just straight out of the box. So yeah, great place to go to. I also have Hive as well, Yuhi Hive, which is basically a JP8000 um, kind of model really. So this is also great. Um, and we have quite a few banks in here. Um, I use a lot of patches for main Zahev actually. He's a great um, sound designer. So. Um, I wish every plugin works the same. It's, um, so yeah, so there's some great sounds in here. Um, so if you want those kind of JP8000 leads. Wow. So, so yeah, that's another JP8000 kind of go-to if I want that kind of sound. Um, am I self-taught and what grade am I? Um, well, yes, I am self-taught, although I had to, um, well, I chose to go to music college and one of the conditions 
was I could do the second year if I got past grade eight, and I did. Um, um, but uh, you know, I've been playing piano since I could walk, so <laughs> I found it fairly straightforward. Um, is the Pro Q the only thing I use to kill subsonics? Um, no, not the only thing. Um, I use Pultec EQ as well, which is good for cutting the bottom end, which it also adds um, a certain presence to anything you put it on. Um, I also use um, soft tubes tilt. So, um, yeah, any more questions, hit me up. Um, otherwise, I'll kind of round this up because I've been talking for what seems like forever. Um, yeah, and I think we'll probably leave it there unless there's anything else coming in. I'll just scroll back through the questions on my laptop. Yeah, I don't know why, but face, Facebook Live just is awful for going back to the questions. His performance at Limit 2017 was exciting. Um, I wasn't around, I was only there for Sunday, so I didn't get to see many. Um, although I do remember um, catching Lostly's set, uh, which was awesome at the time. So uh, there you go. Um, so I'm going to wrap this up. So if you appreciated this, then, um, then great. I hope somebody did. Um, um, yeah, so um, if you want to hear the full track, go check it out, download it on Beatport, that'll be great. Um, or it's on Spotify, stream it on Spotify, check it out. Any more questions, hit me up and I'll try and answer some more of these questions um, when I read back through them. So um, there we go, um, signing off. Um, yeah, I'll say goodbye. Um, it's getting late. I'm going to work on a, on a new track actually right now. So uh, yes, see you again. Bye for now.